ね。Alright guys, welcome to Devlin's Domain. Today I've got a shot on video double feature. Uh, this is, I guess it's sort of like a like a brand ex or an arm of like uh, Severin Films. It's a company called Intervision Picture Corporation. Uh, this is Dream Stalker is our main event here and the bonus film is Death by Love. Uh, I had been aware of this when I, like I saw when it was released when it came out and it wasn't really that appealing to me especially once I found it, it was like shot on video uh, just because of you know I haven't had the best track record with <laughs> shot on video movies they're not you know they don't usually they're not that great uh, there's a lot better movies I could be spending my time on uh, but I did hear great things about these two movies not that they were uh, not that the quality was good necessarily, but that the stories were really fucking out there. Uh, e even the headline here says two of the most insane shot on video shockers of the 90s. Uh, and yeah, just a, a few things that I heard about these movies kind of got me interested in it. And, uh, so I finally just caved and like picked it up. Uh, unfortunately, this looks like it might have been smashed in the mail somehow. I can hear, I can hear the disc like sloshing around inside, and uh, looks the case looks a little warped. It's not closing all the way in there, so that sucks. Uh, hopefully, it's not like scratched up or anything. Uh, so let's see. We've got Dreamstalker, which uh, is supposedly like some kind of like really low budget take on like Nightmare on Elm Street type of story, uh, where this girl's dead boyfriend like comes in her nightmares and stuff uh kind of like a psychedelic horror movie and then death by love is you know the bonus film and it's about it sounds like it's going to be sort of like a slasher uh where this guy's devil worshiping childhood friend is murdering all of his new girlfriends so <laughs> that sounds kind of funny it says there's softcore sex uh, scattershot performances, thick regional accents, and a what the fuck plot twist. Which I've, I've, I don't know what the plot twist is, but I've heard people just go and rants about how crazy the plot twist is, and now it's it's pretty out there. So very anxious for some reason to see both of these movies. Uh, so let's open it up. All right, there's your front cover with Dreamstalker uh, getting the most space on the cover. In your dreams, no one can hear you scream. Uh, and then you got Death by Love there at the bottom. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad cover. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it caught my eye when it came out. I just kind of like looked at it. I was like, oh god, shot on video, pass. Uh, so there's your synopsis for Dream Stalker. And Death by Love. And a couple stills there. Sorry. And your special features, they count Death by Love as a special feature, just because it's, it's a bonus film. Uh, Remembering Ricky with actor Mark Dias. Dirt Bike Journeys with executive producer Tom Negro. Uh, Alan, Gant, Alan Grant remembers Death by Love via video Skype. I'm not sure why they have to specify, but it says it down here too, Yvonne, Eric, and Brad Bishop remember Death by Love via video Skype. I, yeah, I don't understand that. I guess they couldn't be bothered to talk about the film in person <laughs> or something. I, well, I mean, even if it is a Skype interview, like, why do they have to tell you it's Skype? It just kind of sounds like, I don't know, just cheap and lame. Uh, but whatever, you know. It, it's kind of weird that it's almost like they have the same amount of extras for both, both films, even though this one is kind of like the lesser advertised film. Uh, either way, let's open it. Hopefully, it's not a mess inside, because I can hear just stuff clanking around. 
And you can see it's kind of and it's kind of like split open right there. Yeah. Well, there's kind of a smudge or something on there. Either way, you have the disc. That's about it. No fancy bullpen or anything like that. Uh, one thing that's troubling, I I you tend to like just get Blu-rays for now. And uh, this one wasn't released on Blu-ray for whatever reason. They just went on the DVD and that's it. Uh, so this was the only way I could see it. And so I just caved and bought the DVD. Uh, hopefully it was worth the purchase. But I'll tell you in just a second. Alright, so I've watched both of these films back to back. And I must say... For as far as shot on video films go, these are the best two shot on video films I've ever seen. Not that I've seen a whole lot of them, but out of the few I've seen, these are like way better than, than the other ones. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're good though. They're just good in the, in the uh, category that they fall in. Uh, so we'll start with Death by Love. Uh, Joel is like a sculptor, uh, and he just gets a lot of women somehow. He, he's like a older looking guy. He's kind of like balding on top. I, I'm not sure how old he was when he filmed. You know, some people like bald prematurely for whatever reason. Uh, but he gets a lot of like hot younger girls, like seem kind of out of his head of his league. Uh, of course, that's just you know my opinion, just looking at it, but. Uh, he, like at the beginning of the movie, he runs into a jogger and, you know, they kind of talk for a second and he asks her out and they go on a date that night. She sleeps with him that night and the next morning she's dead. And, you know, he, he had already left and came back and he comes back and the police are already there and there's a body. And of course they take him into custody because, you know, he was there the night before, the last person to see her alive and, uh, his... Like, what do they call her? His like business assistant or, or business manager. Yeah, his his business manager like meets the cops there, and you know they kind of talked their way out of get. You know the cops didn't hold him there long. They're just like, okay, we're gonna investigate this further, and uh, somehow their investigation like leads them to some dudes house or somewhere he was staying he's got pictures of all these victims and stuff and they kind of figure out that uh he's a friend of joel's from like way back and he's been following him for like five years everywhere joel goes this guy goes and people end up dead that joel knows it, pretty much any woman that joel's been with ends up dead uh he almost has sex with his business manager twice uh the first time he kind of just like holds himself back you know she's like, he's like getting a massage or get, giving her a massage and then she's like lower to the top and then he's just like oh, well, i'm about to and then he's like nah he pulls it back up and then the he's got like a cabin in the woods where he sculpt does all this sculpting and stuff it's like his getaways where he doesn't have to be bothered and he could just do his art and the his uh real estate agent just shows up and was like oh, i just wanted to see what you're working on and then of course that leads to them you know she wants to come out later and help him work on it and then they're dirty and then they gotta get clean and then that means they gotta get naked and then they're naked so you know what happens after that uh and of course this whole time you know the the friend is on his trail following him he's hiding out in the woods he's spying with like you know binoculars and stuff and seeing him interact with all these women and uh, the cops are you know kind of you know some of the half part of the squad is like okay he's you know joel's innocent he's just you know victim of circumstance he just happened to be there when something really bad happened and then you got one guy who's like ah, i'm still kind of suspicious of him so they're kind of like keeping an eye on his place and uh it gets really strange later on because there's like a part where 
I don't know if there was like a time jump or maybe I just looked away at the wrong time and missed something completely. But the stalker, uh, the friend of Joel, I think his name is Ed, uh, he goes to visit his niece. And his niece is dating Joel. And it just came out of nowhere. And she acted like they'd been dating for a while. So I'm thinking there's like some kind of time jump that I missed. Or that they just did it in such a way where it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, which is totally feasible with this film. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's trying to talk her out of going to see him. and Or, she, you know, talk her out of, you know, being with him. Uh, because she'll die, is what he says. So, uh, I'm not going to ruin the ending where this is all going. What's, you know, what it's leading up to. Uh, that's, you know, the basic premise of the movie, and it's, you know, it's crappy quality video, I mean, it's shot on video, you have to expect uh, low video quality, but it's actually better quality than some of the other ones I've seen. Uh, the lighting is really what taints this film, like, the lighting is so dim in a lot of, a lot of scenes, it's just, it, yeah, they could have done something better. Maybe, or maybe it's just like the shit camera and there's like no fucking hope. It doesn't matter how much lighting they use, it's still just going to look really dark. Uh, that was the main complaint for me as, as far as video quality goes. Uh, it was just a little too dark in a lot of scenes. Uh, but the main character who plays Joel, or the main actor, he's actually the director and writer of the film as well. So uh, he very cleverly wrote himself a role where he sleeps with a lot of women. <laughs> Good thinking. Uh, so overall it was pretty decent. The uh, I know people were talking about the uh, the ending, the what the fuck plot twist. Maybe it's because I was expecting a twist uh, where it wasn't as effective for me. I, I think it made the film better. Like, you know, overall it was, you know, a more enjoyable film because of that twist. But... It didn't really, like, I wasn't like, what the fuck? You know, I didn't see that coming. Uh, you kind of see it coming at some point, you know, before they actually reveal it. So, yeah, I didn't really, yeah, it didn't blow my socks off. Uh, but it was pretty cool. And, you know, this the synopsis always also calls this, like, softcore sex or something like that. And, and they do this with the other movie, too, like... In the, in the interviews, they're talking about, oh, I didn't know I was going to be filming softcore porn. I didn't see any of these scenes as being softcore porn. I've seen softcore porn, and it's just like hardcore porn, except they take the crotch shots out. You know, there's no, like, penetration shown at all. Uh, these sex scenes were basically two people smashed together with really crappy music playing in the background, and they're doing a lot of kissing on the body. And they're showing a boob. There, there's like no thrusting, you know, nothing to imply that there might actually be having sex. I wouldn't call this softcore porn. Uh, and that goes for both films. Well, although there was one shot, we'll get to that in the other <laughs> in a minute. Uh, but I mean, that's about it for Death by Love. It's not as good as I had hoped. Just I was, you know, I was more interested in this film because of the title. Uh, it was just grabbed me more than Dream Stalker. Like Death by Love just sounded more interesting to me. Uh, I'm gonna have to say that Dream Stalker was probably the more interesting. Uh, so we'll go. Let's just jump over to Dream Stalker. So Dream Stalker, uh, you have a couple. Uh, Ricky is a motocross racer, and his girlfriend. His girlfriend. Uh, his girlfriend Brittany is a uh, like a supermodel. He's like a motocross racer. Uh, anyway, they have like these really corny, like love, lovey dovey type scenes. Like they're on a date. Please say you'll never leave me. You know, all kind of dumb shit. And uh, they have a sex scene in a like a jacuzzi. It's like in the in his interview he was talking about. Uh, how when they were shooting it, the director started asking him to suck on her nipples and all this stuff, and he was like, 
totally caught off guard because he didn't realize he was going to be doing this type of stuff and uh, kind of upset about it. Uh, but he says the actress was like really wanting to get in the film and hadn't had much experience. It was pretty much willing to do whatever. So she didn't complain as much, but he, he threw a fit because he didn't know any of this was coming and uh, expected to be compensated for, you know, those type of things. And, uh, but it was, to me, like, her boobs are above water. You hardly see him in the shot. And everything else is below water. You don't, you know, it's not softcore porn. <laughs> like, they just kiss a lot. That's it. And it's not even that long. Uh, so I don't know what the big deal is. I don't know why they keep making a big deal out of these sex scenes. These are like, you know, like Hollywood movies have harder sex scenes than this. Uh, so I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't really understand the whole hang up on that. But anyways, she, she keeps having dreams of, you know, the motocross and, and then he kind of like attacks her or something on his motorcycle. And, uh. She just has like this recurring dream, and then one day he has an accident and he dies, and then she's like grief stricken or whatever, can't believe it. Time jump like three years into the future, she's still upset about it, and she's having to see uh, like a psychiatrist or doctor. Doctor uh, Frisk is what they call him. So they made jokes about Doctor Frisk. Uh, so she's like, I'm not gonna see a doctor named Frisk. Uh, but, you know, he's doing, like, some brain experiments on her and, you know, her nightmares. She's still having nightmares. And it's, it gets fucking crazy. Like, she's having nightmare ghost rape by her dead boyfriend whose face is half melted off. He comes in, like, full motocross cross outfit and mounts her while she's asleep and is, like, forcing himself on her. And then he takes out a condom just in case. <laughs> and it's like, what? Why is that joke there? Like, this is a really serious, supposed to be intense scene, and he takes out a condom. <laughs> he's like, just in case. And then, and then, he, he he's like, thrusting a couple times, and he says, oh no, it broke. <laughs> oh well, and he just keeps going. Like, it was the weirdest sex scene. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. Uh... But that's kind of weird shit that just happens in this movie. Uh, you know, she, a lot of this stuff is like nightmare scenarios, but you don't really know it all the time. Like, it, like there's no clear distinction between this is a dream and this is not. You know, uh, you know, and and once once you get to the end, it kind of clears itself up a little bit. But uh, she starts to dream of uh, her boyfriend, dead Ricky. Uh, killing various other people uh he kills like the funeral home guy for not putting cement around his coffin like he was supposed to uh she ends up oh he, he kills the uh doctor he kills uh, uh the mom no maybe she didn't maybe he didn't kill the mom i can't remember anyways people start dying she's dreaming of him killing them and then they end up dead uh she ends up doing some kind of getaway in a cabin, and it's for some reason on the, in the same area as like some correctional youth youth camp for like just you know disturbed young people. They're supposed, supposed to be like later teenagers or something, and she knows the guy that's running the camp, and they're like real good friends or whatever. And uh, of course, people are like hot on her because she's supposed to be a supermodel, which. You know, she's attractive, but I would not consider her supermodel quality. Uh, <laughs> that's just my opinion. But, uh, so she, you know, she has these encounters with people at the camp, and she has dreams about them, some of them dying. Some of them, they kind of do have, like, some dream-type quality to them. Like, they use a lot of fog in some scenes when, when dead Ricky comes back for revenge or whatever. Like, he just has his various uh, motivations on killing some of these people. Uh, a lot of them don't make sense. <laughs> For the most part. Uh, some of them do, I guess. You know. uh, but it, it's pretty wild, uh, this dead Ricky character. He's kind of like... Uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's sort of a good character for, the, for a movie. Uh, he looks cool. 
he he's got an outfit. He's identifiable. You know what I mean? Like he's kind of like Freddy or Jason or something like that. It's you know it's a character that you would recognize every time he's on screen. It's not like just uh you know some some douchebag you know with a hedge clippers or something. I don't know. <laughs> he just has like a very recognizable look. Like if you know, if you see him, yeah, if I ever see that again, I'm gonna be like, hey, there's dead Ricky. You know what I mean? And it's gonna stick out of my memory. It just has that look to it, and the makeup is really good on the face. Surprisingly, now, there's a lot of really good makeup in this movie for like a lot of the gore and stuff. Uh, the acting is shit. The dialogue isn't very good. Uh, there's jokes in places where there shouldn't be jokes, and the jokes aren't even funny most of the time, except for that condom thing. Uh, yeah, there's like, you know, false awakenings. There's like, you know, oh, it was just a dream. And <laughs> there's like a scene where she's like, all this shit happened. It was fucking crazy. And then she wakes up and it was just a dream. And then the guys, you know, some guys there, and she's just like, oh, it was so horrible. And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry. And then they make out. And then they have sex. And it doesn't make any sense. Why would you have sex in that scenario? You're, you're just telling, like, this has been ongoing for this woman for however long. And she just keeps having these false awakenings. And then she just decides, it, you know, and one of them, you know, after being so distraught, crying, and she's just going to have sex with this guy. <sighs> It doesn't make any sense. But this is another one of the sex scenes where they threw a fit about and they're talking about what a hardcore scene it was. And there's, there's like nothing to it. There's like one shot, like an aerial view where you see the guy's bare ass. Uh, you get to see like one tit hanging out and it's for like a split second and she moves. And, and then it goes back to like a, you know, a floor view where they're just like smooshed against each other and you can't really see anything. I, I don't see what the outrage was over these sex scenes. It's, it's so weird. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a little bit of stunt work in here. Uh, you know, spe special effects are pretty cool. I mean, the story, both of these movies, especially Dreamstalker, they're, uh, they seem like the filmmakers are really talented. And they just don't have shit to work with. And <laughs> they're doing the best they can. That's what it seems like to me. Uh, so I will not shit on these movies. I see the quality in them, uh, even though it's hidden under, you know, piles of manure. <sighs> but that's my opinion. And uh, if, if you don't have a problem with, like, really bad video quality or, you know, bad acting and all that kind of stuff, uh, and you, like, if you just want to see, like, some really ambitious film work on the lowest possible budget, check out these two films. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them. It's a hit or miss, I'm sure, because, you know, these type of movies aren't for everybody. The, like, the shot of video stuff is definitely not for everybody. It's a niche audience. And uh, so far, these are the only two that I've really enjoyed quite a bit. You know, that, you know I found things I liked in, in some of the other ones, but overall, not very good experiences. But this one wasn't not so bad. Oh, you know, I watched them both back-to-back, -back and I went to the special features, too. You got uh, the interview with the... Dead Ricky actor was pretty good. It was probably the best interview on here. Just talk about his experiences on set and everything. And uh, you got Dirt Bike Dreams with the producer of uh, Dreamstalker. And interesting, uh, the original title for Dreamstalker was Kinetic Nightmare, which is a better title and a more accurate title for the story, I believe. Uh, and then, of course, you have the director of and star and writer of Death by Love. He does a video by Skype. Uh, and it's it's somewhat interesting. It's not all that interesting. And then you got a couple of actors from the movie that didn't have, really have big parts. Uh, one of the policemen and the jogger lady, who's the first one to die, uh, are both on there. And yeah, their interviews are kind of just, oh, yep, yeah, something we did. It was okay. <laughs> it was basically their interviews. Uh, you know, it's, you know, it's worth a look. Yeah, for, and these, yeah, these extras are worth a look. I'd say all of them. But, uh, definitely the, uh, Mark Diaz, uh, Dead Ricky actor. That was, that was probably the best interview on here. Uh, anyways, 
This is uh, Intervision, Dream Stalker, Death by Love, Double Feature. Uh, you can get it on the Severn website or you can get it on Amazon, Diabolic DVD. Several places you can get it. I'll put a link in the description uh, so you can find it easily. And uh, like this video if you liked this video. And hit subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you guys.